In today's review, I'll be testing the commuter step through bike from KBO. This is the third bike I've tested from these guys, and the last model I reviewed of theirs had one of the biggest ranges for its class. So I'm curious to see how this is going to compare. Now the commuter costs $1,499, placing it in the category of commuter e-bikes from $1,000 to $2,000. Now I have reviewed a handful of other brands, so let's see how KBO holds up, starting off with the speed test. Well, the Cruiser ties for having the largest motor in this price range. It's a 500 watt brushless, and it also ties for the largest battery, a 48 volt, 16 amp hour lithium Samsung battery, which takes five hours to recharge and can easily be removed and has a battery level readout on it once you take it out. And then once out, when you put it back in, you don't have to use the key, it just snaps back into place. And the battery is rated up to 900 full charge cycles. The Cruiser has up to five pedal assist levels and it's rated up to 22 miles per hour on the highest of those pedal assist levels. I'm gonna show you how fast each one of those levels go, starting off with level one. For pedal assist one, I got nine miles per hour. Pedal assist two, 13. Pedal assist three, 17. Pedal assist four, 21. And pedal assist five, 21 miles per hour, one shy of the rating. Now 21 miles per hour makes the commuter the third fastest bike in this range. The Cruiser has a standard 6061 aluminum frame that weighs 62 pounds and can carry up to 300 pounds. It also has a half twist throttle on the right side. So I'm gonna do an acceleration test like I usually do between pedal assist, the highest pedal assist level and straight throttle. Now I should top out in about 13 to 14 seconds. Well, that is the average for this price range. So let's see if the Cruiser can beat that. The power for both pedal assist and throttle is pretty much equal. The only difference with pedal assist, it does take about a half a revolution for the power to kick in, where with the throttle, it's instant. And that small difference turned out to have the fastest acceleration, taking just under 12 seconds to reach 21 miles per hour, making the commuter the second fastest for acceleration in this price range. The range rating for the cruiser is 30 to 55 miles. And in this price range, I usually get about 25 miles, uh, seems to be the average. So let's see how this does. For this test, I rode the bike hard with a couple dozen stops, quick accelerations, and when I could, I topped the bike out, averaging 20 miles per hour. I'm usually not a fan of these step-through designs. I do like, you know, how easy it is to mount and dismount, but they made it look cool. I like the paint job. It's just simple and neat, and the battery's built into the frame, which is sleek and nice looking, and it is a very long battery. I mean, it goes almost from the top of that down section to the bottom. If you like bikes that have a lot of space between the seat and the handlebars, this is the bike for you guys. And the seat does slide back and forth about an inch and a half. I do have a push to the front as far as it will go, but there's just a ton of room on this bike. It's very open. It has a size rating of 5'2 up to 6'4, and it also has a weight capacity of up to 300 pounds. I've been riding this for about uh, 10 miles, haven't had any sort of vibration, clicking, noise. It's a very solid and quiet bike. Even when climbing some hills, which this trail does have some pretty steep hills, I can hear the motor, but it is one of the quieter ones. As far as balance and handling, taking my hands off the handlebars, I can only do it for about a second or two. This is not as stable as a lot of these fat tire bikes I've been reviewing lately. I do like the length of the handlebars and they are propped up about four inches, so I don't have to lean over as much as I do with other bikes where they're just straight across. Well, the Cruiser does have kind of these fake leather grips, which are standard for a bike in this price range. On the right side, there's a half twist throttle and that does give you full access to the power of the bike. It doesn't matter what pedal assist level you're on. It's got a seven speed Shimano system, which is fast and easy. Haven't had any problems there. The brake levers do have a rubber pad on the outside of each lever, which is nice. And when they're pressed, they do cut off the motor. And the saddle isn't the most comfortable. Some saddles kind of cradle and hold me in position. This one I am sliding around a little bit. So as far as the pedal sensitivity, on the highest gear, gear seven, and when going flat out, when I stop pedaling, it cuts off within about a half a second, which is what I usually see for bikes in this price range. And then when I start to pedal again, it comes on in about one revolution. This is the type of bike that you can still get a workout when you're on the highest pedal assist level. I found a flat stretch of road, put it to gear seven, and I didn't have to increase my cadence very fast for me to start to feel some resistance. And I kind of like that though, because it gives you, you know, the power when you need it. But if you want to work out, you just have to pedal a little bit faster and there you go. The Cruiser has an alloy front fork suspension with 80 millimeters of travel. Now that can be adjusted and locked 
and actually is doing a pretty good job on this trail. This is an older trail in the area. There's a bunch of these cracks that they've put some, you know, putty and stuff in there to kind of fill them up, but that has settled over the years. And I can feel those shocks absorbing. I can actually see them absorbing those bumps. It does have a hardtail, so you kind of want to be careful on the type of trail you bring this on. The back end is a little bit bumpy and that seat's not the most comfortable. It also has 27.5 by 2.4 inch Panasonic tires. And those are street tires. The bike just seems to glide and coast. And they do have a reflective strip on each side of the tire. Towards the end of the test, with the last battery bar about halfway gone, I was averaging the same I did with a full battery. The commuter has very good power consistency. When I made it back home, I still had plenty of power. I hadn't hit that critical point where the power dramatically drops off like most bikes do. So I think I could have gotten another one to three miles. My app recorded 19.53 miles with 783 feet in elevation gain. Now that is about 10 miles less than the low end of the range rating, but still decent for a bike in this price range. Most brands get about 20 to 25 miles. El Cabio says the cruiser can power up a 20% grade hill. This one ahead of me is about 17 to 18%, so pretty close to the rating. I'm gonna start off on the lowest gear on the highest pedal assist mode and see how fast I can make it up. And this is the steepest part here, holding the seven. I'm in the lowest gear. It's starting to burn my legs a little bit. Now it's up to eight. Starting to gain speed, nine. Hear that motor singing at me, 10. And pretty much over the top. It was pretty slow, but it got me up. So now you know what it can do on a pretty steep hill. The Cruiser has 180 millimeter dual disc brakes. Can I test them out going down the same hill? I just came out for the hill test. Yeah, those stopped pretty quick. A lot uh, more sudden than I was expecting. I had to let up a little bit because they were just, uh, they were almost throwing me off the bike. They are very powerful, smooth, great stopping power. Here's an overview of the LCD screen and control pad. Hold down the M button to turn the bike on and that displays battery life, speed, odometer, and assist level. Plus and minus to change the pedal assist levels. Hit the M button to switch between different readouts. And that's pretty much it. The bike also comes with a very bright 48 volt headlight and an integrated tail light that lights up when either lever is pressed. The commuter can be ridden in light rain, has a two year warranty and free shipping in the lower 48. Overall, if you're around my weight of 185 pounds, this is what you can expect. A top speed of 21 miles per hour for both pedal assist five and straight throttle. A quick and speedy acceleration, the second fastest in this class. Range is good at almost 20 miles while on the highest pedal assist level. Hill climbing ability isn't bad, tackling an 18% slope at seven miles per hour. And brakes are very nice for non-hydraulic, plenty of stopping power and smooth. Now I thought the commuter step through held up to the competition. With the stats it produced, it really boils down to looks. Everything else held up. If you want more info, I've got the link in the description along with the link to my website so you can check out all my reviews sorted by price and capability. Before you go, hit that like button and please subscribe for the latest in electric bike, board and scooter reviews. Thanks for watching and take care.